Hello, everyone, and thanks for joining us today. I'm Harry Urban, publisher of Woodworking Network and FDMC Magazine. Welcome to our webinar, Automating 3D Models to Machine-Ready Code. This webinar is brought to you by SimTech. And we have two presenters today from SimTech. First, we have Kenny Belfato, the National Sales Manager for SimTech. Say hello, Kenny. Hello, everybody. It's Kenny Belfato. Kenny's been involved in CAD CAM training, execution, development, and support for more than 30 years. He's worked with dozens of manufacturing companies from around the country from a variety of industries. So Kenny's a wealth of knowledge, and I encourage you all on this webcast to ask questions because you, you can learn a lot from Kenny. Also working with Kenny this afternoon is Giovanni Ramos. Say, hello, say hi, Giovanni. Hey, guys. Happy Wednesday. <laughs> Thanks, Giovanni. Bonnie, in just a second, but a little housekeeping. This webinar will be recorded so that you can view it again or share it with a colleague. There are also a couple of handouts attached on your viewer console that you can download at any time. Uh, one of the handouts includes also a link to uh, the previous C SimTech webinar that we did a, a couple of months ago called Best Practices in CNC. And this is going to be a very interactive session. We have some polling questions that we'll push out to you as we go through the presentation. And we'll share those results with you in real time. So uh, please participate in those uh, polling questions because we asked some pretty interesting questions for everyone involved here. And then finally, we encourage you to ask questions. And if we don't get to your question on the webinar today, uh, the team at SimTech will do their best to get get those, ans those questions answered for you as soon as possible. With that, I'll now turn it over to Kenny Belfato. Take it away, Kenny. Hi, uh, thank you all for attending this webinar. And uh, we've got an exciting um, solution to show you here. And this is really about automating things, automating 3D models right to machine codes, programs ready to run on the router. Here at SimTech, we specialize in automation. The company was established in 1986, and we realized back then that your very expensive CNC machine is really only as good as your ability to program it. And with that, we came up with the idea of integrating the CAD with the CAM, the computer-aided design integrated with computer-aided manufacturing, and that's what the SIM means, computer integration. Uh, and what it means is it's seamless. The CAD and the CAM all integrated in the same place, one location. It's one very simple concept. It's one package, easy to use type of uh, format in this integrated model. Today, we're gonna talk more about what automation is. What is it good for? How the automation revolutionized the industry compared to just doing things manually, you know. Before there was CAD, you were drawing things manually. Well, now that there's CAD and CAM, we can integrate those together and automate things. Some of the limitations in today's systems and a new product called AutoSim that really automates the automation and takes your manufacturing to a new level. After this presentation, we'll take some time and answer questions for you. And of course, I'll always be available uh, on the contact page to answer any of your questions personally as well. All right, now before we get into the meat and potatoes of everything, we have our first survey question. How often does your company use automation? Never, never but want to, sometimes or daily and we'll give everybody a couple seconds to put in their answers let's take a look at the results all right so nobody said never so that's definitely a good thing guys and a lot of you are saying daily and um that's good so we're going to go ahead and show some of the other ones Th those of you that do sometimes and never but want to few reasons why you may want to do that all right so the first thing is first what is automation good for short answer is absolutely everything 
In today's modern and dynamic manufacturing environments, the need to be able to scale faster than ever means that CAD CAM programming automation is an essential tool to making that happen. In embracing such a powerful tool like automation in CAD CAM programming, it allows you to get some of the more repetitive and manual processes out of the hands of your CNC programmers, which then allows your drafting, engineering, and CNC programming teams to be more productive, reduce errors, improve collaboration, and most importantly, frees up time that can be spent on more meaningful, thoughtful work other than the repetitive task of creating CNC programs manually. In today's constantly evolving CNC world, the addition of technologies like robotics, warehouse material handling systems, or even onboard and offload labeling systems, to name a few of the changes, all these combine with dedicated work cells for accomplishing specific tasks, and your CNC programmers aren't just creating CNC programs anymore, but end up managing entire workflows. And the CNC machine has really become just one part of the process in this whole operation. Of course, the more complex your CNC department is, the more complex the undertaking to properly manage all the moving parts can become. So here we find the increasing need to combine multiple automated tasks and configurations across groups of CNC machines via automation. So what we find in the attempt to fulfill that need is that, well, there are some limitations we currently face that we need to work around. So now I'll hand it over to Kenny to go over some of the current automation system limitations that we face today. Very good, let's take a look. Uh, we're gonna use the term job and what a job is in our software is a collection of parts or drawings, individual components, and how many you want to manufacture and what material they're on, and various settings, like should they be nested, or should they be single parts, or should they go to a saw? So it takes time right now to build those jobs manually, adding parts to a interface, telling it how many, what material, and uh, where, you know, where to do start points and in interfacing it. So it takes time to build these jobs. The other thing that takes time is programming for multiple machines. Each router, if you have different brands or different manufacturers, their machines can be wildly different, uh, different origin locations, different NC code technology, um, all different settings for each machine. So. If you want to take the same job and run it through three different routers, it takes time to do that. And that's one of the limitations, how much time it takes. Then if you're going to process things automatically and run 10, 20, 100 jobs unattended, there you'd like to get some feedback. Uh, for example, an email that sends to you, here, this part had a problem, or there's a drawing that's missing, or this component is doesn't fit on the sheet. So being able to get some information back during this process is a limitation. And then there's uh, no real ability to process a whole group of, for example, 3D assemblies. Let's say you have an assembly for a couch and a love seat and a chair and a, uh, a credenza, and you wanna be able to process those, tell it how many of each, for example. So now being able to put a whole list of parts and process that, and that could be a month's worth of production. And then another limitation would be to do all this and still use advanced features like two-sided nesting or common line, uh, skeleton cutting, saving of scrap. You wanna get your maximum yield every time. You never wanna jeopardize your yields. And you don't want to jeopardize holding small parts. All of that you want to have automated. So let's take a look at the history, if you will. Um, everybody remember Microsoft DOS? Well, somehow back in the 80s, we were able to do CAD CAM on computers with one megabyte of memory. And it was all done through typing. You know, you typed everything from a command line. And uh, early on, we had ways to uh, basically put in the name of a part and then space some arguments after that, and it would automatically process one part at a time. That was the early days in, in DOS. There was no real interface. Everything had to be typed. Then, uh, 
Bill Gates gave us Windows and uh, a modern interface. So our first interface was something called um, Mac to code and cab to code. And this was an interface where you could build a job and it was a collection of 2D drawings and they had geometry on different layers and it could even import from uh, spreadsheets and, and cut lists, but it was just 2D drawings. And it was cumbersome to try and output that to multiple machines as well. So then the next interface came along is um, more like we have today is the router sim automation suite. It uses a modern SQL server database. And that way, using a database system like this, you can have new databases for each customer or for each month or for each project. And you can build folders and organize your work better. And you can build these jobs and jobs can have other jobs inside of them even. So it came a long way from DOS to the modern interface. But now more and more people wanted to model in 3D and do 3D assemblies. And the advantage there is when you're modeling in 3D, although it's not impossible to make a bad model, it, you really have to go out of your way to make a bad model. Everything has to fit together perfectly for it to look right and for it to, to work right. So when you're modeling in 3D, you're giving it the depth of cut. You're attaching materials. You're giving it part names. When you copy a part, then we can we can keep track of the copies. So from the 3D models, we approach this new interface called AutoSim that does let you take and simply drag an assembly and drop it into a folder. And a folder is what we call uh, like a watch. It's watched. As soon as something falls in there, it starts being acted upon. So that's what we're going to show you next. Oh, All right. Now, survey question. Before we get into that, we have our next survey question for everyone in the audience. How many sheets a day do you process through your machine or machines on average? 1 to 10, 11 to 50, or 50 plus? All right. And we'll go ahead and give everyone a few seconds to put in their answers. And we get our results. All right, so it looks like we have a pretty good spread. Um, some high production and some specialized as well. So that's good to see. Thanks, everybody. So what is this AutoSim? How do we automate 3D models to machine-ready code? Well, let's take a look. We've got a short video here that uh, shows the interface of the AutoSim. And the way it works, it's, it works on a watchdog principle. So you have a folder set up. And uh, in the folder, for example, you can make a CSV file. And it would have different names of, uh, in this example, SolidWorks assemblies. Now, they could be AutoCAD drawings. They could be inventor assemblies. They could be Creo or Pro Engineer assemblies, SolidWorks assemblies. And you can even mix and match. That uh, cut list or that CSV file is pasted into a watchdog folder or dragged and dropped. So you could do it multiple ways. A non-technical person could be taking these cut lists and dropping them into a folder to get processed. And from there, the AutoSim is automated. Everything happens unattended. So, you know, put this on a separate computer and let it let it do its thing. You'll see in the background that uh, SolidWorks starts up. It opens up the first assembly and uh, it's going to take that assembly, turn it into individual drawings with geometry on different layers. And then it's going to build a job. And uh, in that cut list, there was an argument that just said the word desk. And that's going to be one of the configurations to run it through three different machines. You can have multiple configurations. So you can have another configuration that runs it through just two point-to-point -point machines or a third configuration that just runs it through one router. So each one of those lines in the spreadsheet or in your cut list, each one of the lines 
can have an argument that tells it what to do. Run this for three machines. Run this one for two machines. Run this one for one machine. And um, that way, all the information is right there in the cut list. So once that cut list um, is dragged and dropped, the software takes over, and it's processing these things automatically. It went through that first assembly, turned them into individual parts, and now it runs it through our router sim automation suite, which is a full featured uh, CAD CAM system. And there we'll create things like uh, reports, time studies, labels, printouts, simulations. And it'll do that for each of the machines. So if, you, if your um, configuration was for three different routers, then we'll get labels for all three routers. We'll get reports for all three routers. And of course, each router could have its own uh, machining parameters, right? You could have a different feed rate from router to router. And they can have different things like, uh, you know, machine origins. Even the materials can be different from one machine to the next. One machine might have long material in X, another might have long material in Y. And we account for all that. Uh, so really what's happening here is just the screen is going to flash quite a few times while it processes the parts. And all the data that's scrolling by on the screen is saved and it's captured. And that actually goes into the email report that gets sent to you. So step by step, you can get emails and uh, follow along as it does the processing automatically. And you get different nest results. All of this is now automating the automation. That's exactly what's happening here. And then, like I said, you get full output, you get full router sim output uh, that can give you things like single part programs. It's useful if you ever do a remake, you'll have the single program right there, ready to cut the part again. You get the nested drawings and you can edit the nests. If you ever want to change the nest, you open them up in AutoCAD and move things around, erase, drag other parts in there draw something else. Um, so even though it is fully automated, you have the ability to edit any of the results. But really what this is for is to make uh, a week or a day, a week or a month's worth of production, somebody that doesn't know anything about CAD CAM, a non-technical person can just do that just by putting things in a folder. This folder is the the uh, watchdog, whatever you drop in there, gets acted on. Now, it could be a single part drawing. It could be a 3D assembly that has a bunch of parts in it. It could be a single 3D model from all those different sources. And uh, you can make some match things too. Uh, we also, one of the things we just recently did, I wanted to tell everybody is we also interface with Revit now as well. So um, that's an architectural package from Autodesk, and we can take Revit assemblies, process those through this same uh, optimization, optimization and automation. So that's the, uh, the AutoSim, and as this video progresses, it's going to just really just flash a couple parts on the screen and make the nest. It, if you've seen RouterSim before, these are some of the outputs that you'll get. And everything gets processed for you automatically. And then the results are really the best part because in there you can mix, you can further go and put some of these jobs together. And you see it named the name of the post in there. So one of the machines is going to a wiki and then a Mach 1 and a Jeevan. So it's outputting all those files and the folders are all open. There's all the G codes, all the NC code. It can really make a lot of production for you in a very short period of time. When it's complete, you'll see it uh, writes to a log file, and that's the log file that we're going to get emailed. And you'll see um, under configurations in these settings is where we can set up our email server so it knows who to send to. You can send to multiple people at once, too. You get multiple reports sent to you. Awesome. Thanks, Kenny, right. for taking the time to go over that. Um, so before we move forward, though, we do have one more survey question. 
how important are updates and reports to your company's success? Not at all, somewhat, very, or a top priority? We'll give everybody just a few seconds to go ahead and put in their answers. All right, really happy to see that it's important to some degree to everybody, that's great. Um, and for those of you that are somewhat, hopefully we've given you some uh, things to think about to make it a little more important. So uh, here's, go, go ahead, ahead Giovanni. Uh, this was the automatic emailing report system. So the, uh, you already saw some of the data, so it just tells you if any parts were bad and uh, parts didn't fit whenever you get a report. Alrighty, so just to kind of wrap things together here, it's important to know that whether or not you're using automation, the future of CNC manufacturing will require more systems to work together than ever before. So the concept of automation itself isn't new, and while being able to manage CNC machines as they become more complex in an automated system will lead to reduced labor costs, improved productivity, quicker ROIs, and much more, we at SimTech here strive to make programming that will benefit your company by continuing to offer products that take you from design to CNC ready code in the most efficient manner. We can open up to uh, questions and answers right now if anybody wants to jot down some questions. All right, I think we did have a couple of those come in. Um, so we know we have a couple here already. So it looks like one of them we got here. Uh, is an automated system necessary if I only have one CNC machine or do I need multiple CNC machines to utilize automation? What do you think about that, Kenny? All right, well, you know, you can do, this works with just one router or mm -hmm. multiple routers. So if you have multiple machines, um, it really plays a bigger part because you, a lot of people want to take the same program and run it through or have it available to run through on multiple machines. And they weren't really thinking about that when they got the different machines that their programs would be a lot different. So it's really a, a function of the CAD, uh, their CAD CAM software. To output that to multiple machines, but it does work just as well with one router or multiple routers. Gotcha. Okay. That, that definitely makes sense. Uh, looks like another one that came in was, is AutoSim compatible with multiple CAD and modeling programs? That's a good question. Yes, it is. And I, I listed a few of those. You know, we've always been integrated inside of AutoCAD, and more and more people are drawing in AutoCAD 3D models. So, of course, we work with AutoCAD models, 2D drawings, 3D models, DXF files. Then... Of course, uh, more migrating into in, uh, Inventor and SolidWorks. Both of those fully supported. You could take single part files from Inventor or SolidWorks, as well as assembly files from Inventor or SolidWorks, or cut lists that just call out the assembly name and how many and what uh, uh, configuration you want to run those through. Creo is also very, very popular. It's a pro engineer. It used to be called this Creo. But we work with that as well. We've automated full automation through Creo, as well as Solid Edge, Fusion 360, Revit, um, Step Files, just about everything. Because nowadays, you know, AutoCAD can import. If you ever just type import, you'll see all the different kind of file formats it can import right there. And even if it's not in that list, we've been able to automate. Um, the ability to program those different types of CAD models. Huh, okay, right, because I know that was kind of, you know, a, a floating question that I had too, is making sure that it was compatible with, as you mentioned, just about everything. So that's really great to hear. Um, another one that came in was, I have both nested-based and point-to-point -point CNC machines. Can this program different manufacturing methods in machines? It can, yes. Um, we have the ability in the program to set up these configurations and the configurations would tell it what kind of routers to process to. So they can go to a, a series of point to points or a, or a regular router, single parts 
or nested parts or any combination of both of those. Okay, no gotcha. Any kind of router you got. Great, great. Oh, here's another one here. Uh, what kind of technical support is included with the AutoSim product itself? Well, you know, your your success is very important to us. So uh, the support really starts with world-class training. And uh, we do mm -hmm. that with you to get your whole system up and running. And then we have phone support, email support, web-based support. So you get the full complement of tech support that's available from SimTech right now. Also available with the AutoSim product. Gotcha. Okay. And looks like we have one that was kind of similar to uh, some of these that were asked as well. Is there an out-of-the-box version of the AutoSim program, and can it be customized to my company's specific needs? Okay, so uh, yes, uh, throughout the years, SimTech has made automated solutions for people, and it was custom software called Second Shift, for example, where we wrote software specifically for your needs. What we're trying to do with the AutoSim is to make an out-of-the-box product that does everything you want in one out-of-the-box solution. But we do customize as well. So if you needed to do something different, we welcome the opportunity to talk to you about that, tell you what we can or can't do, and write custom software for you. So there's both an out-of-the-box solution and a custom solution that can work based on exactly whatever features you want to add to it or what you want to do. We can do it both. Awesome. Okay. So it's it's good to know that it's that flexible, that it can basically fit anybody's needs. Um, another one that did come in, Kenny, do I need a separate computer to run AutoSim or can I use my main computer and have it run in the background? Uh, well, you can run on a uh, on your main computer, but I don't recommend it. I recommend a separate computer to run this automated. I mean, it's going to do a, a lot of work, and the screen's going to be flashing. So, just get a separate computer to run the auto sim, and that way you can do your emails and uh, regular correspondence, regular computing on your computer while the mm. auto sim computer does all its processing. Separate computer is the right answer for. Uh, for this type of automation. Okay, good, because I know that's a really important one to address, especially if you know people are looking to uh, take advantage of this type of technology. Uh, another one that popped up, uh, what kind of training is needed to use AutoSim at my company? What do you think about that one? Uh, the training program, again, it's, like I said, it's very important to get properly trained, and that also gets everything up and running with you at the same time. So we do an on-site training program. Our instructor is very experienced, can get your entire system up and running with you, hands-on, and process jobs with you during the class so that everything is tested and working by the end of the class and you're up and running. So on-site, hands-on training is the best way to, to do this. We can mm. also do internet-based training, but we prefer the, the on-site training to get you up and running the fastest. Okay, that definitely makes a lot of sense. Um, another one that we did have as well, um, what type of code files can your software make, such as CIX and stuff like that? So what, I guess, what type of uh, specific output can we get? Well, since 1986, we've been making post processors for every kind of router out there. So we've got um, the post processor is the, is the engine that takes the, um, the programs and outputs it for specific machines. You know, BSE needs different code than Wiki uh, and HomeAg, and they need different code than Onshrewd and Como. So each one of these post processors is available to output specific code for your machine. And they have different um, uh, different technologies, like the tool number on one machine might be different than tool numbers on another. You know, and they'll have different number of tools in the tool changer. Uh, different gang drills, and that's all handled with the post processor. Okay, so good to know. Basically, just about anybody in any machine. That's good. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so then we had another one. This one's pretty important as well. When will this product be available? It's available today. We're available today to talk to you about it and get you up and running, get the uh, 
the number of machines that you have figured out and configured, and we will be glad to uh, work with you to get this up and running at your shop as soon as possible. Okay, that one makes sense. Um, okay, so another one we got. When programming to multiple machines, how does it know what knowledge file to use? It's a pretty good one. Uh, well, part of that configuration, uh, the configuration in the AutoSim, it has settings for all of that, the knowledge drawing, the do it file. And so you can have a configuration that's, for example, called um, uh, Onstrude Aluminum. And it's set up to use an aluminum post process or an aluminum knowledge drawing, for example. You can have Onstrude Plywood, and it's set up to use the Onstrude Post with Plywood Knowledges. And each line in the spreadsheet can have what argument or which one of those uh, knowledges or do it files to use. Okay, good. So there's definitely a way to address that to make sure that everyone's getting the output that they need. Um, all right, so I think that about does it. Um, so I think from here on, Kenny, you can go ahead and um, let everybody know how they can reach out to you and what the next steps are. Well, thank you for attending. And we are available to do a live presentation for you and uh, talk more about CAD CAM software anytime. If there's any questions that we didn't cover, please feel free to contact me direct or email and I'll get the answers for you right away. Hey, thanks Kenny and Giovanni for a really great presentation. Uh, the knowledge that was on this presentation is, is very evident. So I'm really proud and happy to have uh, SimTech involved in Woodworking Network um, webcasts. And this is the end of the webinar on behalf of SimTech and Woodworking Network. I wanna thank all of you for participating. We, we had tremendous participation in our polls and with the questions and answers. If we didn't get to your question, um, you know how to get a hold of Kenny and Giovanni. Uh, so I want to say thank you again for joining and so long, everybody. Thank you.